good to see you. I, I don't think we've seen this kind of reaction for any of the consumer staples this earnings season between the tougher comps and the inflation problems. What, why are you bucking the trend? Yeah, hi, Sarah. Great to be with you today. Um, I think what you're seeing is we have momentum in our business. Um, we just put up our best fiscal year just finished uh, at the end of the last quarter uh, since we've been a publicly traded company. It goes back to the separation from Energizer in 2015. And on top of having our best year, we had our best finish uh, to the year. We had momentum at the end of the year up 8% in the last quarter with all categories growing, all geographies growing. And so there's broad based strength in the business. And then I think when you when you take um, the sales line, that's one thing. But our team has done an amazing job of managing the inflation in the business and the supply chain. I think we're one of the only companies growing gross margin right now. We were up 30 basis points on gross margin in the past year. And I think our outlook for the future is uh, to not be as impact on the margin line as well. So I think it's a combination of all of that. So why is that? How, how are you able to grow margin in this kind of environment? And does that mean we're going to be paying more as consumers for razors and sunscreens and tampons and everything else you make? Yeah, no doubt we're all going to be paying more uh, for, for consumer products. Um, that's part of it. We're seeing unchecked inflation. Um, the headline today was the, the worst inflation in the last 30 years. I've been in this business for 25 years. I've never seen inflation like we're seeing right now. Um, if you look back over the past year, we offset it um, with pricing, a little bit of pricing on sun care, on our wet ones business. Um, we just took pricing on fem care, mid single digits um, this last month in, in October. And uh, we'll selectively look to take pricing across the balance of the portfolio. So that's part of it. But there's 400 basis points roughly of headwind coming at us in the year ahead. So we'll get about 150 basis points back in pricing. And we have a very strong capability around cost takeout and productivity work. And we'll get 150 to 200 basis points back in productivity work. And so we're not immune to it. We, we have the problem like everyone else, but we have some good levers to deal with it. Wow. I mean, you just said we've never seen inflation like it, Rod. Uh, do, do you think policymakers are asleep at the wheel? Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's the perfect storm, Will, to be honest with you. It, it's hard to pinpoint one thing. I'll just give you an example of what we deal with in the supply chain. We'll have a material that's hung up at a port, and we need the material to keep the production line going to have the product at shelf. And so you're left with, do you get stuck at port, or do you then reorder that material potentially from another supplier, put it in an airplane, and air transport it to the plant where you need to go? So there's there's cost in the system um, just to get around the, the supply chain messiness, if you will, where there's duplicate costs there, right? There, there's two supply chains in that case on one material. There's air freight, there's ocean freight, um, and then there's wage pressure, right? I think that we're, we're seeing all of that. So we have it materials and wages at the same time. And, and I think, you know, frankly, the, the wage piece is probably temporary, I would say, more so than the materials piece where the materials piece is potentially for us a bit more transitory as things stable down. I'm not going to predict um, the month that happens, but I think by the time we get to next spring and summer, we'll see some stabilization at least, which will help. All right, I was going to ask you how long you expect it to last. I wonder, Rod, just because of your categories with sunscreens and, and shaving razors, if actually, unlike some of the other staples and some of your competitors, you do better when there is more mobility and that and that's certainly helping your business yeah for sure Sarah we do we do much better with mobility you saw us in the the early part of this pandemic as, as people were not going to the office less mobile um, there's more facial hair right people just weren't shaving quite as much and, and more relaxed standards they also weren't getting outside going on vacations getting to the beach or the water in the same way they historically did we really saw that start to change back in the spring um, earlier this year and we've continued to benefit from that here in the U.S. Now, interestingly enough, you know, 45 percent of our sales come from outside the U.S. And it's not opened up outside the U.S. like it has here in the U.S. And so I think we remain bullish and optimistic on those two categories you mentioned, that as more and more people go back to the office, and I'm in the office, and there's more people in my office every day, it seems like, um, you'll see the shaving habits return, we believe. And we're seeing the category grow. Um, and I think sun care, as you, as you look to the future, you saw international travel begin to open back up. That will help us. Our international sun care business is driven largely by tourism. 
And so as that comes online in the year ahead, you know, that should be a tailwind for us, as well as I think there's still a lot of pent-up demand for people just to get out and get their proper vacation routines back in place.